Praise the Lord Chapel, Kigali, and wherever you are watching us from. This is the weekly encouragement that I bring to you. And today I want to be speaking about um, the call to follow Jesus. And I'll be picking it from the book of Mark, chapter 1, verse 16. Let's go to the text. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. And at once they left their nets and followed him. When he had gone a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat, preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. If you read later, somewhere in... Um, in, in chapter 2, also says, verse 13 says, Once again, Jesus went outside the lake. A, a large crowd um, came to him, and he began to teach them. As he walked along, he saw Levi. Levi now. Levi is Matthew, in case you don't get it. Matthew, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at, at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, Jesus told him. And Levi got up and followed him. And that evening, they had dinner in Levi's home. Now, Follow me. That's all Jesus said. Follow me. And I want to begin by a question. Have you made the decision to follow Christ? Do you know him? If he called you today, will you follow? Now, why would we follow Jesus? That's quite a good question to ask. Why would we follow Jesus? Now, Jesus is the door to salvation. Now, when he was Calling these disciples, I presume they sense an authority. And the story that is not told about, about, um, about Simon and his brother Andrew is that they had been fishing all night and Jesus came to them and defied the odds by asking them to cast the nets in the morning. <laughs> and as fishermen, they knew that doesn't work because they had, fishing, they had been fishing the whole night. But Jesus told them, do it. And when they did it, they caught so much fish that they could not even pull the nets. And then he told them, come, I'll make you fishers of men. What you caught that was marvelous, when you are with me to catch men, the results will be much more abounding. You are walking into the miraculous. Now, Jesus is the door to salvation. He is the way. He is the truth. Now, I know many of us lack direction in life. We don't know how, what to pursue. We don't know, you know, which businesses to... We, basically, we, we, sometimes we stumble into careers and things like that. But in Christ, these guys had made the right decision because he's the way. He's the truth. The undefiable truth. We seek truth from many sources, but Christ is the truth. <laughs> And he's the door to heaven. He's the promise that was given. And besides him, there is no other. Now I want to present to you Jesus as the Lord. Jesus is Lord. He is the Christ. He is the Messiah. He was the one prophesied from time immemorial. And he had come to be and to show us the way. Ultimately, he had not done. He had, he had not done what he had come to do because he had not yet done, died on the cross. But he had prepared people. Now, the guys he called had trades. These guys were fishermen. Some were tax collectors. Some were blacksmith, like like like, like Simon the, the Zealot, who was also a politician as well, um, defending uh, the the Jews against the Romans. Then you have people like 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 uh, Philip, who was also a businessman. You have James, you have Judas, you have Iscariot. All these people, they were not of high standing, but had a trade. Now, you also have a trade today, or maybe you're still searching yourself. Now, if Jesus came along and said, come, follow me, would you? Of course, today, he does it through the word of God. He does it through the spirit that convicts us. He does it through many other ways, and his ways are greater than our ways. 
But the cause is still the same. That he's seeking to save us. He's seeking to draw us to himself. He's seeking to take us back to the promise that he gave us. To unite us with God. Now, when we are in Christ, we are new. We become new creatures. That's what the Bible says. That in Christ, when we receive salvation, the old is gone. The new is come. Change from the inside out happens to us. And this change is reliant on following Jesus. Is reliant on our obedience to Christ. Is reliant on the trust we give to him. And it does not change the status of the disciples. No. But in them is a new dispensation of people who are fired up to follow him and to proclaim him. And eventually, this will be the people who become bold proclaimers, the forerunners of the gospel, and who reveal the power of God by the Holy Spirit. And Christian start there. Now we are all called, when we, when we follow Christ, it's a journey of becoming like Christ. So Christ, when he called them, he was calling them to a journey that will ultimately shape the entire life. But also, it will shape the entire <laughs> humanity. Such guys who are not gone to school, who are not so much of high standing, but who are used of God greatly and mightily. You could be a candidate for that. There's a principle that says this. Whatever rules our hearts will also rule our lives. Who is the king of your heart? Who is the Lord? Who sits at the throne of your heart? Because that who sits at your throne determines how you live, determines your destiny, determines where you're going to end up. But Christ has laid out a home for those who believe in him. So that call, follow me, it carries with it a command to stop following our own agendas. And that extraordinary, that extraordinarily countercultural in the 21st century, it's very countercultural. Because everyone is trying to be someone. Everyone is trying to take the driver's seat. And it seems unrealistic to relinquish our own plans and goals and dreams to serve somebody else. But that's what Jesus exactly is calling us to do. And the good news is that it is for the best of our interest. And we become safe in God's hands. Because he knows our plans. He knows our goals. The dreams we have, he locked them in us. And he knows better than we know what is ultimately best for us. And the journey that is marked out for us. And how we ought to live it. And sometimes we live mediocre life when God has destined to have a life that is so excellent. That is higher than ourselves. And you can only experience that when you give back this life to Christ because he's the author and perfecter of this life and the faith that we profess. And in some way, it's, it's much easier for Simon, and, for Simon and Andrew to follow Christ than it is for us because we don't see him in person. And we don't see the authority that he speaks with. There's no tangible human authority. But there is a way to Christ. And it comes through the word of God. The Holy Spirit is also at work in every believer and is present with us. And as we dig into scripture, it opens us into the new reality of what God wants for us. And helping us to learn and apply these principles. And so the question still stands. Christ came and knocked at your door and said, Come, George, follow me, would you? I beseech you to. If you have never received Christ as your personal Savior, consider it. Invite him in your heart. He will come and he will change your life situation 
and he'll take you and lead you into his perfect will for your life. And you live life that is full of hope, full of peace. And his love is filled in our hearts and draws us closer to him. And every move that we make, every word that we profess, everything about us becomes like Christ. And that's the journey that we are on, the salvational journey. Until Christ returns, we are in preparation and he makes us better every day, better every day, better every day. I made that choice. Will you make that choice? Because Christ wants you to be part of his family and ultimately he connect you to the Father in heaven. And he's there for us and he walks with us and he strengthens us across the way. He will do the same for you. God bless you.